In this video I'm going to talk about my custom Photoshop workspace. Um, first thing you're going to notice is this actions palette I've got set up um, and I've got my actions set up in button mode which is something you can control here. This is what the actions would normally look like just a long list and you'd have to select an action and then click the, uh, the run button down here but if you set them up in button mode basically you can run them with just one click um, so if I can go to actual pixels or fit to view so the reason I've got this set up like this is because I use a Cintiq um, but I think if you use any kind of uh, tablet even a, a bamboo or an Intuos um, this is really useful because uh, in my case the keyboard is actually sort of behind the tablet so it's much quicker for me to just uh, quickly just come over here and click a button than it is to you know to sort of reach over and uh, and uh, use a keyboard shortcut so um, I've got all my most uh, used commands so for instance if I've got a selection marquee and I just want to hide the edges I can toggle it that on and off or deselect float um, got a whole bunch of actions I've got some of my favorite brushes which are actually tool presets so if I just want a, the regular Photoshop brush I just click here and then I've got the uh, resize command mapped to one of my pens keys but I've also got my most used sizes here so if I want to just go back to 10 pixels I do that 6 pixels you get the idea so then I want to switch to my airbrush just click the button switch to the airbrush so um, this is just a really really quick way of working for me and uh, I hi highly recommend you try it I've also got a second set of actions uh, that I sort of stick underneath and there's these ones and they've got in brackets they've got a keyboard shortcut so basically these are uh, these aren't ones that I use necessarily so much as buttons but I've got keys uh, associated with them some of these are really old I've been using these for more than 10 years so you can see there's still like some KPT uh, filters in there that I haven't used for decades but um, I keep these around just because um, basically some of them I still use all the time so for instance um, uh, control F5 for crop which is uh, this one here I still use so there's a few like that that I uh, that, that I use a lot so basically I've, I've kept them now the next thing I want to talk about is tool presets um, so if I just expand my tool presets you can see that I've got a hell of a lot these are just brushes nothing else um, and all these ones at the bottom with a Z prefix I downloaded from a Chinese artist called Zuzu you can check him out on Div Divine Art uh, Z-H-U, Z-H-U he's a fantastic Photoshop and Painter artist and it's basically by downloading this guy's brushes and uh, really taking them apart that I started to really understand how the Photoshop brush engine works so since then I've created a lot of my own brushes and downloaded some more and I've got uh, quite a few that do some really nice things so if I just quickly um, set some colors up I'll just show you a couple of things quickly um, so some of these oil brushes I can't remember where I downloaded them from but um, you can see they've got these really nice sort of painterly, painterly pardon me sort of effects um, and I've got a watercolor water uh, brush that's got a similar kind of thing it's, it's sort of um, graduating between the foreground and background color depending on how hard I press on the tablet so you can see it gives a really nice effect and I've got a load of other things you know just these uh, texture brushes um, you know, quite a lot of useful stuff you can download all of this I will show you where to get all my brushes um, my actions anything you want um, you just reset this if you go to uh, www.itchy hyphen animation dot co dot uk that's my home page forward slash photoshop um, basically in here you've got all my stuff you've got my brushes you've got my tool presets you've got my actions you've got the whole lot there so if you download all this stuff you can basically recreate this workspace all these tools um, anything you want basically um, so another thing I want to talk about is my swatches um, because um, I don't use the default Photoshop ones because they're absolutely hopeless so I've organized these in primary and so basically a sort of color wheel primary secondary colors and then I've got grays neutral grays and I've got warm grays and cool grays and I've got some earth tones and some flesh tones and then all these sort of uh, basic colors are sort of descending down in uh, tone and saturation so basically it's a really these are really useful starting points for you know digital painting I mean obviously even after I uh, select a swatch I, I will go in the colors palette and uh, and change it or uh, change it on the color picker or whatever but um, this is a much better 
uh, swatch uh, palette than the, the default one with Photoshop. Another thing I like to talk about is the rotate canvas tool. Um, if you map it to one of the, um, if you map the shortcut for the rotate canvas tool to one of the keys on your tablet, um, basically you can make uh, use of sticky keys in Photoshop. So I've got a brush tool selected and just a regular brush. Now if I hold down the uh, sticky key for um, rotate canvas, I can temporarily rotate the canvas, but as soon as I let go, I'm back to my brush tool and I can carry on drawing. So this is really, really good because it means you can rotate the canvas basically on the fly without interrupting your drawing. And if you map the escape key to another one of your uh, tablet keys, um, you can straighten the canvas with one click. So this is a really useful um, little tip. Another thing that's really handy with the uh, rotate canvas tool is um, if you rotate it to an arbitrary angle, um, sometimes I use the edges of the document to sort of help me line up something up, and then you hold down the shift key, it will help you draw a straight line at any angle you wish, um, and you can also have pressure sensitivity at the same time. So that's uh, quite a nice little thing to know about. Now as well as having lots of tool presets for my brushes, I've also got a couple of really useful ones for the smudge tool. So um, I'll just show you a couple. Um, this one called Soft Pressure Blender. If you've ever used Painter, there's a really nice blender in there called Just Add Water. Well this uh, Soft Pressure Blender is very very similar. I'll just uh, show you. If you press it really gently, you can see how it's blending really beautifully and just sort of making uh, the, the, the sort of paint look kind of wet. Um, so this is a really useful blending tool that I use quite a lot um, to sort of soften edges in digital paint and stuff. It, um, it does work better if you press gently, which is why it's got that name. Um, I've got a couple of other ones that are sort of more painterly, like this is more sort of like an oily kind of feel. But I don't use them quite as much as this uh, soft pressure one. And finally, uh, I'm just going to switch to a different image to talk about a couple of these commands that are in the uh, in my actions, and that's the glow layer and the overlay layer. So um, I'll do the glow layer first. If I click that, what it does, you can see in the layers palette, it's added a black layer above uh, above whichever layer you had selected, and it's uh, put it in linear dodge mode. And if I just select an airbrush, and let's just grab a um, color out here, just uh, let's use a sort of orangey color. Um, basically with this glow layer and the airbrush you can paint glows onto your image so if you want to sort of add a glow you see to highlight. Um, the linear dodge mode is, is what basically does all the work for you so this is really nice for retouching or whatever you know let's add some blue glows on this on this side um, and you can put your airbrush into into screen mode or even linear dodge mode if you want to really you know strengthen the effect. Um, so let me just disable that and go back to my background layer and now I'll talk about the overlay layer. So what the overlay layer does, if I click that, it creates a grey layer in overlay mode and then you can just use an airbrush again uh, but not with colour this time. I tend to, You can use colour but I tend to just use the black and white so I just uh, vary the strength of the uh, you know, make it darker or make it lighter. And you can use this overlay layer to essentially relight your image. Um, so let's say I want to, um, let's say I want to darken, uh, so I'm still in screen mode, that's not a good idea. I want to darken this part of the image. You can see that with this overlay layer it's really easy. And then if I go back to a lighter color, I can lighten this bit, maybe lighten the shark's mouth. So basically it lets you uh, essentially do a bit of relighting. Um, let's just uh, toggle the layer on and off so you can see what difference it's making. It really, again, it's a great retouching tool if you want to um, sort of change the the emphasis of the lighting in your in your work. Um, so this is why I have these two commands here because basically I use them a lot when I'm uh, retouching uh, renders. Um, so anyway, I hope you found this this useful and thanks very much for watching.